Labs, and I'm a research fellow at the Berkman Institute for Data Science. What I'm going to be presenting to you today, and I'm going to talk fast, um, is text pressure, uh, also known as annotator content analysis, sometimes confused for Obamacare. Um, but this is a tool that allows researchers like me to enlist crowds and citizen scientists in the annotation of a lot of text according to uh, concepts that I think are important as a research scientist. Um, I've had gotten help from a lot of people, including the Hypothesis Open Annotation Fund. Um, so if you like text pressure, you should thank Dan and the Hypothesis team and Jeremy and Nick Stane and everyone. So let me talk about this from the standpoint of a researcher. I want to understand the Occupy movements, and I want to understand um, every little action that's happening, how those actions are interlinked, and then how those actions are shaped by the events in which they occur, and then how those events are interlinked across a whole campaign um, in a particular city. And then I want to understand this across 184 cities that have their own Occupy movements. Um, so to, under to, to get all of the variables and information I need to start doing uh, statistical calculations to understand, for instance, why certain sequences of behavior lead to violence or to negotiation, I need a lot of really well-structured data, and I need to gather it all from newspaper articles. Um, so I had over 8,000 newspaper articles. I wanted to understand everything that was happening during protester-initiated events, everything that was happening during police-initiated events, everything that was happening th uh, at the city level that the civilian government was up to, and everything that was happening during uh, at those occupying campaigns themselves. So well over 120 different variables I wanted to extract from all these 8,000 news articles. Um, existing text algorithms can't really do this stuff. Um, I'll, you, you know that. And we mostly trust humans to do this because we understand natural language so well. Um, and in, in the science, and social sciences in particular, we've been using this method called content analysis. And basically, it's stuff, stuff that people have been doing for millennia, ever since we've had written text. Um, people write their annotations and their marginalia notes, and they'll start using different colors that mean different things. And uh, lately, in the last decade or so, um, we've, had, we've moved this into a computer environment, but it's, it's kind of an esoteric process. And it doesn't really scale. The big problems um, are really demonstrated well by the Dynamics of Collective Action uh, project out of Stanford. It took 10 years to get uh, 26 variables, not 120 some variables, but 26 variables out of a bunch of news newspaper articles describing uh, movements in New York State. Um, the big bottle bottleneck from a research standpoint is that undergraduates learn how to do the task, and then, and, but, and then they like start playing Ultimate Frisbee, or they graduate, and then you have to train a new wave, a new wave every time. <laughs> So I wanted to figure out how I could get this work done by hundreds or thousands of people through the internet. Um, so again, here's the problem, 8,000 news articles, all these different variables. What I realized is that each of those different sets, there are different sets of variables that pertain to different types of text that I can find in news articles. So right now I can, I can point you to say that blue text is about a police initiated event, the orange text is about a protester initiated event, that brick colored text is about what's going on at the camp. And I had my team go through and do this, but I've created text thresher to make this process uh, really work um, at scale. So once you've, once you've got all of these high-level annotations, the next thing you do is you ask people to do a basic read and comprehension test that we've all been doing since middle school. We just serve one of those little pieces of text, and then we ask them a few questions about that text, uh, and they highlight the, the, the words that justify their answer. That's, that's all the text thresher does. It's pretty simple. Let me show you. Um, um, so here is that high-level highlighting interface. Um, I've just started one here. But, uh, what I'm highlighting here is all the information that's about the protest-initiated event. Um, and I'm using that, this red highlighter to do that. If I go to the next article, this one might have information about protests. It might have some information here about what's going on at the camp. It might have some information here about something the police did. Okay, I can, so you can imagine hundreds of thousands of people doing that across a bunch of articles. And then the next step is that we retrieve those tasks uh, with text pressure down from the internet. We're doing all of this with crowd crafting and Taibasa, uh, Daniel Lombrana, uh, it's now called Saiba, Saiba, as a part of this community, this IMT community, so you may be familiar with them. Um, but we're using a lot of his tools. And then the next thing I do is I send this to, is that not quite right? Okay. I send those highlights, those high-level highlights, thank you, that's much better. Um, I send those high-level highlights to the next interface of text pressure. Uh, let's make sure that it worked, looks like it did. Um, and now I have a different interface. I'm going to, 
put it into some amount. Norman, what did you do? show this later to people because uh, it looks like we have some other time but what, what basically what you're going to be seeing um, with this interface is that we have a display of the same text units that I just highlighted for you and we have people answer questions and as they answer a question they get a highlighter they highlight the text that justifies their answer and we apply you know dozens and dozens of different highlighter colors to just that one small text unit and in the process what you're doing is you're getting that very fine grained highly granular annotation um, on the, the text units uh, for each different type of text units, whether it's describing a protester in the shade event, a police in the shade event, what's going on at the camp, or whatever. And then all these aggregate up to the level of the article. So we have incredibly fine grade annotations on all of this stuff. We're using this for uh, data on Occupy Movement newspaper data, but we're also using it um, with, a with a different set of schema, conceptual schema, to look at how. Uh, how people commit argumentative fallacies or inferential mistakes in the news media, and we're kind of using this uh, right now in a project called Public Editor um, that we're actually pitching to the Met Foundation today in a second round. So uh, I wish I could have shown you exactly how it works, uh, but I will show you later if you want to come and see me. Thank you.